Hello booktube, hello friends, welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books, I'm Elizabeth and I've got another book haul for you, specifically a vacation book haul and I want to show you some book mail that I received. So some of you already know, I've already talked about the fact that I went on a trip, uh, I went with both of my girls and the church youth, we had a really fun trip to Franklin, North Carolina. We took some side trips. We went to Pigeon Forge. We went to Cherokee. We went to Dillard, Georgia, and it was really a lot of fun. Now, normally the church kids go on a mission trip and all of that got canceled. And the youth director said, you know what, let's just do something fun. And so we did. And Emily had never gotten to go on a church youth trip because of her health. And this was the first year she was able to go. So I went along and I took my own car. So I had a little bit of freedom to do a little extra thrifting, shopping, book shopping, all of that. And a few stops on the way back and all of that. So I came home with quite a few books and I want to show them to you. Now the majority of them are cozy, well I don't know, about a third of them are cozy mysteries. A few of them are inspirational or Christian fiction and a handful are nonfiction. So let's just get started. Oh now before I do that I want to say a big giant thank you to one of my subscribers, Twaina Callahan. I hope I'm saying your name right. And she sent me some books and I'm super excited. This first trilogy is all in one big bind up and it is some Amish fiction. I just did a video about Amish fiction. I don't know what order this is going up but I am super excited about this. This is on my TBR. This is the Amish Cooking Class Trilogy by Wanda Brunstetter. So all three books in the trilogy are in this bind-up. We have The Seekers, The Blessing, and The Celebration. Now, I have not read these, but I have read The Half-Stitched Amish Quilting Club, which I think is kind of a similar format. That's about an Amish woman teaching a quilting class, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be about an Amish woman teaching a cooking class. So I am super excited about this. Thank you. Thank you again so much. And she also sent me another book that is Christian fiction. This is published by Multnomah. It's called A Steadfast Surrender by Nancy Moser. I don't know anything about this author, but let me just read you one little sentence on the back. It says that it's about three women trying to order their days. Little do they realize there's no escaping the one, one is capitalized, who sees their every step and asks for their unconditional surrender. Will they wave the white flag? So that sounds really great, and I'm super excited about that. Now, the other two books that she sent me, I'm not sure what I will do with one of them because I already have a copy, but this one is one of my all-time favorite books. I own it in hardcover, and I have said in the past that I like to keep on hand copies of it because I love to share it with people. So, Twaina, thank you for this because I did not have any extra copies of this right now. This is the first Miss Julia book. It's called Miss Julia Speaks Her Mind. This is fantastic. It's so good. One of my favorite books of all time. And I love to keep extra copies because whenever I tell people about Miss Julia, I like to be able to get them started. So I love having these on hand. Thank you again. Now the one book that I already have a copy of, I already have this whole series. And thank you so much for thinking of me because this is definitely a series that's on my TBR. And so I will share this with someone else who I think would enjoy this. But this is book two in the Seaside Knitters Mysteries by Sally Goldenbaum. Now I have not read this yet, but I do have it. And this is, uh, did I say already? It's book two, Patterns in the Sand. So thank you oh, so much again. It's just wonderful. And I told her in the message that considering how many books I have and, you know, with her just saying, I'm going to send you some books and not really knowing what I have on hand and what I don't, she did really good. So that's impressive. And, uh, you know, I believe God's hand is in all of that. So thank you so much again, Twaina, for the books. I appreciate it so much. And if I can share some books with you, We'll, we'll get in touch and uh, and I'll see maybe if I can can share some back uh, to you. Okay, so let's get started. Let me start with the nonfiction. I've got four nonfiction books. This one looks fun. I've got a kind of a little collection of books about words and language. In fact, I had been saving them for a Ribsat readathon. Some of you who are newer to booktube may not know what Ribsat is. That meant read your own bookshelves. And the idea was you would start at one point on your bookshelf and you would read across. So I have 
several books like of this genre over here around the corner and they're mostly all short and I thought oh that's perfect for a rib set well Miranda who used to host rib set hasn't been seen on booktube in a while so Miranda if you're out there let's do another rib set but anyway this is going to be added to that collection it's called who put the butter in butterfly and other fearless investigations into our illogical language by David Feldman so that sounds right up my alley I love stuff like that this is a book I got at Goodwill and I went to Goodwill twice while we were in Frank I went once by myself and then later when the kids had some free time I said who wants to go thrifting so we went to Goodwill and I saw it both times and the second time I thought okay I'm just gonna get it it's staying it keeps standing out to me it's a devotional book called delight yourself in the Lord even on bad hair days <laughs> and so that looks really fun it uh it says it's a devotional for women on the go by Sandra D. Bricker, Kristen Billerbeck, Diane Hunt, Debbie Main, and Trish Perry. So that looks really fun, and I do really enjoy a good devotional book. There is a Native American bookstore in Cherokee, North Carolina, which is one of the places we went, and he, of course, had a lot of Cherokee books. But I looked around for a while and I said, okay, I know that this is mostly Cherokee, but do you have anything Choctaw? Because that's my tribe. And he goes, yeah, they're right over there. So I found some Tim Tingle books and I have been wanting to read a Tim Tingle book. I've heard Elizabeth Tyree speak highly of him. And I found this one called Walking the Choctaw Road. And it says it's by Choctaw storyteller Tim Tingle. Stories from Red People Memory. And it's not very long. There's Tim Tingle. And I am really excited about that. And then the other one I got was at a thrift store. I just happened to pass along the way. And I got in there and I was looking at their books. And it said, all books free. I still gave them a quarter for this. This is Fit for Life. I've read this before. My husband has been attempting to, to do this kind of on again, off again. The main thing we took from this is that you should eat only fruit in the morning before noon. And so he pretty much does that. He very rarely eats anything other than fruit. And uh, I may still give it a try, although it's harder than it sounds. But anyway, this is um, Fit for Life. It's by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond. And we just read a library copy. And I always said, if I run across a copy that's, you know, really good price, I'll pick it up. Well, free is a good price. So I grabbed it. All right, let's move on to the Christian fiction. I found a couple of book warehouse type stores in Pigeon Forge, and one of them had this book by Kim Vogel Sawyer, Bringing Maggie Home. This is the first book in a series, and Waterbrook Multnomah sent me the second book. I can't even remember the title of it now, Unveiling the Past, I think. And I realized after I got it that this was the first book. So I found it and picked it up. These are Christian mysteries. So this is something that I will probably keep on the back burner until maybe March Mystery Madness of next year. I'm not sure. And another Christian mystery. In fact, I have just finished up my sorting out my cozies project and I showed two books from this series and I had recently well while I was on my trip I found another one I think this is book three yes in the tea room mysteries this is by Vera Dodge this is one of the guideposts trilogies that I love to collect and look at the cover it's just beautiful and I recently discovered that these are on audio on Hoopla this series so I'm hoping to get to those soon Here's an older one. I didn't even, I don't, still don't even know how many are in the series, but my sister sent me book two of this series. I think it's called Sweet Briar Bride. And then later on, I found the first book, Sweet Briar. And now I was in a thrift store somewhere along the way, and I found Sweet Briar Spring. These are by Brenda Wilby. And they're also guidepost books. And then at a flea market, oh, I think right outside of Cherokee, I found this. Uh, Several, there was not a whole lot, but there were a handful of flea market people that had a few books. And so I kind of went down the row scanning and, uh, and I found this. It's in beautiful condition. It is called Home for Christmas. And it's got four short stories by Colleen Coble, Carol Cox, Terry Fowler, and Gail Gamer Marvin Martin. So the only one there I recognize is Colleen Coble, but it's a beautiful book. It's hardcover. And, uh, and so I had to pick that up. And then the last one of the hardcover or trade paperback size is the last one of the Sally Goldenbaum 
Seaside Knitters books that I didn't have, or at least of the first 10, I did not have book three. So, Twina, you came so close. If you had sent me book three after I just bought it, I would have been like, oh, man. Uh, but I have been collecting this series for a while. I have not started reading them yet, but this is Moon Spinners, and I got this at one of the book warehouse type stores. In fact, that particular store was called something like Moon moon pie or moon something and and i found this moon spinner at that store and so then i have a few mass market paperbacks most of these are gene hager books and i decided to go ahead and get these because they are so hard to find and so i grabbed the ones they had that i didn't have this was at a used bookstore in franklin north carolina it has recently changed ownership i believe the young woman who owns it now was a veterinarian for 10 years and now she owns a bookstore so i found several of these gene hager books this is book three in the molly bear paw series seven black stones and there's only four books in this series. I believe Molly Bearpaw is a Cherokee tribal policeman. And then the rest of these by Jean Hager are from the Iris House B&B series. I have books one and five in the series, and it's a seven book series. So now I have the rest of them. Book two is Dead and Buried. Now, I saw most of these at the Gardner's Bookstore in Tulsa when I was visiting my sister, but they didn't have the Christmas one. So I ended up just getting the first one and... You know, they like I said, they've just been so hard to find. Otherwise, that I decided this time to go ahead and get them since they did have the Christmas one. But the uh, third book is called Death on the Drunkard's Path. And then the fourth one is the Christmas one, The Last Noel. And book six, because I already have book five. It's called So Deadly. Book six is Way Dead. And the last one, book seven, is Bride and Doom. <laughs> so that is it. That is my book mail and my vacation book haul. Oh no, I have three more that are not from that series. But before I show you those last three books, I'm going to jump in here. It's a couple of days later and I've been editing videos, uploading videos. I have been putting away books and I found two books that I should have included in that first book haul of a couple of weeks ago, right after uh, we've been thrifting and and just getting back into book shopping. And I have two books here that should have gone in that haul. So since this haul video is a miscellaneous video as well, I want to show you two books that I did not get on my vacation. One of them I got at our library book sale, and it looks like so much fun. I don't know anything about it except what I have read on the inside flap, but it looks hilarious. This is called Moon Pies and Movie Stars by Amy Wallen, and this is about a mother in Texas who sees her daughter on television, and I guess her daughter has just taken off to, you know, to be famous or whatever. And so the mother sees her daughter on television, hops in a Winnebago, and takes off to Hollywood to try to bring her daughter back home. And this looks awesome. It says that it is a funny book. I hope that it is. And I love the cover and the title. Even on the inside flap, look, there's Mrs. Beasley. I've got a Mrs. Beasley. And this just looks awesome. And I did something that I rarely ever do. I walked into Books A Million and I bought a brand new book, which happens to be a new release, and I've already read it. So I wanted to show you. This is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is a prequel story to The Hunger Games. I will be telling you more about it in my July wrap-up or maybe even do a whole review. I don't know. I'm sure that there are already... a boatload of reviews out there on booktube that will probably do a better job than me. I did really enjoy it. I didn't love everything about it, but I did really enjoy it. I think that this is a fun book for fans of The Hunger Games, and I got a little bit of swag when I bought it. I also got a pin, so when the movie comes out, I can wear that pin and, uh, and I'm excited about it. So I'm going to go back now to the footage I previously filmed and show you those last three cozy mysteries that I bought on my vacation and then let my previous self sign off for this video. And then I have three more mass market paperbacks that are not Jean Hager books. This one I got uh, at a flea market that was across the street from the big one. It was called Aunt Fanny's Flea Market, I think. And I met a couple of wonderful ladies there who are, uh, they, they run that 
that small flea market. It's right next to the Army Navy surplus. So if you're ever in that area, I want you to stop in there because she had a whole room that was books, but it had gotten uh, it had gotten stacked up with some other things. I don't know exactly the whole story, but she said within a couple of months, she's going to be getting that all cleaned out and then having a whole bookstore in that flea market area. And so she did let me peek in there and I couldn't see a lot, but I, after she went to the trouble to unlock the door and let me in to look, I wanted to at least get something. So I found this book that looks interesting. It's book two in the Penny Brannigan Mysteries. It's called A Brush with Death. And I think that this has something to do with painting or art. And the author is Elizabeth J. Duncan. So this is book two in that series. And then on the way home, I stopped at a couple of used bookstores and I found a couple of books that I was interested in. One that I've had a really hard time finding, which I'll show you last. But this one is book two in the Orchard series by Sheila Conley. I have found book one and this is book two, Rotten to the Core. Of all the Sheila Conley series, I've actually read two or three of her series, and this is the one I'm most interested in, and I haven't read any of these, but now I have the first two, and so I'm excited about that. And I have been wanting to go back and read more of the Leslie Meyer series. You know, they have all, there's one about each holiday. In fact, some holidays have two or more. And the second book is called Tippy Toe Murder, and my library doesn't have it. I've searched all my local used bookstores. I had never been able to find it, and I finally found it. Now, I will say... I do remember that these are on ebook on Hoopla, but I like to have a physical book, even though I don't have space for it. And I'm just excited that I found this one. And it's apparently about the birth of a baby. I don't even remember that much about the first one. It's a Christmassy themed book. And we read that for Book One Cozy's Club. I have read a couple of others later on in the series, but I wanted to kind of go back to the beginning and read through. And this is book two. So I'm excited to get that. And that's it. That is all the books I got on my vacation. That is my book mail that I got recently. And thank you again to Twaina for sending me those. And that's all for this video. I hope you are having a great day, reading a good book, and God bless you.